So in recent years, uh, IP has increasingly captured the attention and focus of the medical community. I believe that a team-based healthcare system is able to provide the patients with the best treatment plan. Hence, it is important to highlight the indispensable roles different healthcare professionals play in their line of work and the importance of uh, interprofessionalism. So a little bit about uh, NUSPS IPE committee. Our committee is made up of 21 members and as a committee, we hope to provide interprofessional opportunities to the student body in the form of interprofessional enrichment activities. And in short, it's called IEAs for students from different faculties to mingle with one another outside of their respective faculty pastime. We also hope to be the bridge between students and the IP steering committee. So basically the IP steering committee is essentially made up of professors from different faculties, like different healthcare faculties. So we provide feedback from the students to the steering comm in order to improve on the interprofessional core curriculums. So the principles of IPE were founded upon several key values. The values in no order of importance are teamwork, roles and responsibilities. That is knowing like the designated roles of different healthcare professionals, effective communication, patient family community focus, learning and reflection and ethical practice. So in each IEA, our committee hope to inculcate these values to our participants. It is important for the students to understand each healthcare professional role in order to better appreciate one another's expertise and better understand the importance of working together. So now I'll be sharing several events that are initiated by our COM and also some events that are co-organized by our committee in collaboration with other faculties. So the first event I would like to share about will be Madness Games. It is a yearly event held by NUS Yong Lee Lin School of Medicine um, the, uh, in the nursing school and NTU uh, LKC School of Medicine. This year, NUS Pharmacy was invited to plan and participate in MNG. So MNG 2018 thus became the inaugural and the only sporting event to evolve all four faculties. In subsequent years to come, NUS Pharmacy is going to be involved in this event. Hence, in 2019, we will be revamping the name of the event in, hoping, in hope to include other healthcare faculties in the future. So MNG was established with the goals to strengthen relations between the four faculties, to promote healthy lifestyle, and to provide a platform for students to explore and try out new sports of interest. It is a large scale sporting event which involves close to 300 participants from all four faculties. Each team consisted of students from different fac in order to promote inter-faculty interaction. So the different sport activities were soccer, captain sport, and ultimate frisbee. So all these sports require teamwork and effective communication thus fulfilling the key values mentioned previously. So some positive feedback we receive are that it is a fun and chill bonding event. It provides a good platform for different faculties to mingle with one another, especially for the LKC students who are not based in NUS but in NTU. Students also enjoyed the free catered lunch, shirts, and drawstring bags that were given out during the event. Some improvements that can be done uh, is to shorten the duration of the event as it can be like too long and too tiring to some participants. And perhaps we also can include more healthcare faculties in the future with the revamping of the name. For other member organizations who wish to plan a similar sports event, it would be great to have a good relationship with other healthcare faculties in order to facilitate better discussions when it comes to planning for the event. It would be important to have sufficient logistics such as the number of balls and the number of frisbees that you will need. 
Hence, it's important to source earlier as well, like for all these logistics. To incentivize like more students to participate, it would be good to have some sponsorships for our drinks and refreshments during the event. So the next um, event I'll be talking about is sports, which stands for social work, pharmacy, occupational therapy. Sport is a one-day workshop organized by uh, NUSPS IPECOM. It aims to promote interprofessional understanding between NUS Pharmacy, NUS Social Work, and Singapore Institute of Technology, in short SIT, Occupational Therapy. This year, it involved about 30 participants from all three faculties. The event is fully student-led and consisted of three main, three main components. Uh, the first would be roundtable discussions, second, hands-on activities, third, case-based discussion. These components inculcate um, teamwork, effective communication, and understanding of different healthcare professional roles and responsibilities to the students. So the first component uh, is the roundtable discussion which was implemented to replace the mass sharing sessions that were held in the previous years, as there were feedbacks that they were too formal and content heavy. So in the round table discussion, we split the participants into teams of six to eight people from different faculties, and these teams will move from table to table. Each table would have one facile to share and discuss about stereotypes of each profession, things they learn in their respective school and the future job scopes and also the medical conditions that um, they will be discussing about. This creates a more personal and engaging platform that encourages participants to share their views about the content being shared by the facilities. So the second component is the hands-on activities. Each faculty will come up with a hands-on activity that is patient-oriented and reflects the bulk of professional practice today. This allows students from different faculties to experience what other healthcare professional does and better appreciate each other's profession. So for example, pharmacy did patient counselling and motivational interview for smoking cessation. Social work shared about EcoMap and Genogram and for occupational therapy, they shared about patient framing with person environment occupation model. So the third component would be the case-based discussions, and they were done in the flip classroom style approach. A worksheet with a patient case is given out to each group and were tasked to work on it. Some questions related to the case will be asked and hints will be given too. So these questions will require different approaches from different faculties. So for example, for occupational therapy, um, they will have to discuss a suitable occupational therapy measure for the patient. And there's also the hint at the back. And for pharmacy, um, this patient will require a stronger painkiller and would need the team to discuss a management plan for the patient. And there is also a hint behind the question. Hence, it will require different faculty students to teach and also learn from one another, honing interprofessional communication skills. It will also allow students to better understand the different thought processes and approaches by different faculties. So some positive feedback we gathered for sport is that the round table discussions were very engaging and clarified students' doubts and stereotypes about different professions. And the hands-on activities were interesting and fresh students, to the students as well, as they don't get to experience all this in their respective faculties. So some improvement that can be made for sport uh, firstly, a long-standing uh, complaint was the overload of content. Secondly, some students could not follow the discussion. And lastly, there was a long buffer time 
So next year, we will try to cut short the buffer time and also the duration of the event to avoid overloading of content. We will also want to streamline the content and activities by coming up with a overarching theme. So for example, if the theme is about chronic diseases, the activities and the discussions points will be centered around just this topic. We will also look into providing more guiding questions like, for example, the hints at the back behind the questions just now, and guided hands-on activities in addition to avoid using jargons. There was also a lower turnout rate than expected, hence we will try to generate more ideas to incentivize students to participate, especially for the social work and the occupational therapy students. Perhaps like trying not to clash with like their schedule. So for other member organizations who wish to plan a similar educational event, it will be important to meet other faculties earlier in order to deconflict the schedule and choose a date that all faculties are free to ensure sufficient participation rates. It is also important to choose a topic that all faculties involved have something to share about in order to display the importance of interprofessionalism. It will be good to come up with different topics and issues to share and discuss about for subsequent events so that like there's no repeat of content and that the same participants will still want to try still want to join again. So the next event I would like to share about is Fit Fun Foods, in short FFF. So FFF is a free on-site health education events designed to attend to the healthcare needs of foreign workers in Singapore. These foreign workers usually come to Singapore to work as construction uh, site workers or factory workers, and they are among the most economically disadvantaged and medically vulnerable groups due to lack of access to proper healthcare and medication. And through this event, we hope to equip the migrant workers with knowledge of management of their health and also allow students to have an opportunity to interact with foreign workers and learn how to communicate with them. As this is not something we usually get to do. So in, in, in conjunction with National Day period, which is um, in August for Singapore, we also hope to make our migrant guests feel appreciated in Singapore and that they are an integral part of our dynamic workforce. So we also have like some booths that um, cater, like try to uh, display some like national day stuff. Yeah. So some key values that we, fulfill, we want to fulfill through this event would be communication among students and with workers, community focus and learning and reflection. So NUS IPE partnered with UT Community Center Youth Executive Committee to organize this event at the Foreign Workers' Home, which is their dormitory. It was a large-scale event which involved close to 350 participants. At the event, we provide DMI, BP, optometry, and auditory screening. We also have a health education segment which mainly focuses on non-pharmacological approaches and management. So for example, healthy eating, responses for common acute conditions such as headache and diarrhea, and dermatological care such as proper hygiene techniques to minimize infections. This is because migrant workers' living conditions may be more prone to bacterial and fungal infections. We also partnered with uh, NUS Dentistry for them to set up a booth to conduct oral health education on recommended brushing techniques. So pharmacy students get to interact with dentistry students in this event too. We also had a National Day booth, uh, which just now I said about the in conjunction with the National Day period, where the workers use hand prints to form like a picture related to Singapore. So some positive feedback we gathered about FFF 
Uh, FFF benefited the migrant workers as they are now more aware of their health. And for the students, it was a meaningful event as they get to help the workers and also learn to communicate with them. He also allowed dentistry and pharmacy students to interact with one another. And um, the number of stations were just right as well. Some improvement that can be done would be to um, uh, work with the different partners earlier to allow buffer and planning time. So for the optometry screening, we actually partnered with an external vendor. However, the vendor was unable to make it down on the day itself. And perhaps such, um, uh, such thing can be avoided if we would have approached uh, the vendor earlier. Lanyards with name tags could be given out to all volunteers so that it would be easier for students who initially do not know one another to work together. More translators could be on site to help with translating the information to the migrant workers who are less proficient in English. Alternatively, students can also learn some simple Bengali to better communicate with the workers. So some advice for other member organizations who would, uh, would be to start the uh, partnering uh, work earlier and to work closely with the organization and the dormitory to avoid a break in communication. And this is something we really have to work on as well. Perhaps another alternative would be to explore the other communities of migrant workers, such as those working within your own school campus, as the beneficiaries are closer to heart and will be easier to work with the school as well. Lastly, uh, I'll be sharing about Learn Other Languages in short LOL. LOL is a language program organized by NUSPSIPE.com to equip healthcare students with basic conversational skills and medical related vocabularies in languages such as Malay, Mandarin, and dialects like Cantonese and Hokkien so that they can better communicate with our growing aging population. It also aims to provide a platform for students from different faculties to interact outside of their own classroom time. So some positive feedback, uh, there is a meaningful and interesting program as it allows students to go back to their roots to learn about their dialects as dialects are not offered as a course in school, hence it really provided a good platform for students who are interested to learn. It is useful to the students as well as they can now better understand and communicate with elderly especially. In view of previous year's feedback, we optimized the number of classes to better suit the predicted sign up numbers instead of setting quotas for each faculty and also implemented a cent central, centrally unlocked sign up form to allow students from all three faculties and the three faculties are nursing, medicine and pharmacy to have an ample time to prepare for the sign up in case um, some faculties are disadvantaged due to the miscommunication. And these improvements receive positive feedback, so we'll be continuing, continuing them in the subsequent events. This year, we received feedback that students do not get to practice their speaking during class. Hence, we aim to incorporate more practice time. Perhaps we could allow the students to communicate with one another in the language that they are learning to build a relationship and also hone communication skills. So some advice for member of other member organizations will be to source for vendors that can provide good classes at affordable prices, as costs may be a concern for most students. The languages that are offered should be useful and relevant in the society. Um, but uh, it will be preferable that these languages are not offered under school curriculum as then they wouldn't want to join 
the event. It would be good to have some interaction between the students as well, instead of just students coming to learn in like a lecture style. Mm. Yeah. So I've come to the end of my sharing. And I will now open the floor for any discussion points regarding the IP or the events that I've shared or any questions. Thank you, Minhui, for sharing. Um, so if anyone has any questions for Minhui, um, you can either type an I into the chat box into the um, and I'll the floor will be passed on to you to be able to ask Minhui directly um, about your question. Or if you are shy, you can also type your question into the chat box and then Minhui will answer your question from that form. And after this webinar, if you do have additional questions that you wish to ask Minhui, um, feel free to also email the RPO of APRO. So are there any questions from anyone that Yep, so we have one question for Minhui. Um, it says, in FFF, did NUSPS recruit the translators? Were, the translate, were they professional translators? Oh, uh, for the translators, we actually approach HealthServe. HealthServe is uh, an organization, a non-profitable organization who actually help uh, the migrant workers and um, they also provide like um, healthcare services for them so they have some translators and yeah so we approach them for the translators and there's also uh, SDI Academy who provides uh, courses for these migrant workers yeah so we also approach them um, to help us in translating for the events Yep, so we have another question from Desmond. So he says, thank you for your presentation. Among all activities, which one do you think is the best in promoting interprofessional collaboration? Mm. In my opinion, I think it would be sport. So it, um, sport is like more educational. Unlike like the other um events like netmouse games which is like playing playing sport um i think that sport is the best in promoting interprofessional collaboration because it really helps uh, the students to understand the different expertise that uh, different healthcare professional can provide and i think through through this event um students can better appreciate each other and to be able to work together as a healthcare team. Are there any more questions for Minhui?
Um, yep, so um, I think Kana has a question for you. So I will pass the floor to Kana. Uh, I have two questions regarding to the uh, discuss, case based discussion. So, one is how did you decide the case? Is it based on the real clinical situation or do you set the ideal case? And the second question is after the discussion, are there some comments or feedback from the real professional doctors or pharmacists, or there's just a discussion for the students? Yeah, thank you in advance. Um, so, to Kana's question, the first question is about um, how we chose the case, right? So, um, for the case, um, we'll try to like discuss with the other uh, two faculties to um uh, it's more like a like a um just how you were saying about ideal case and real life case so uh i assume that real life case means like a real patient so uh, actually we choose we actually do up like an ideal case not we didn't take it from like a real life consultation case yeah so we come up with our own um patient case for the students to work on and um this fake patient actually has like a different com uh, comorbidities um that we will have to discuss a treatment plan for the patients and this will require different approaches from different faculties like farm and social work and OT. We all learn different stuff and we will have to come together and to do our plan for the patient. Yeah. So oh, the second question um, about whether the doctors and healthcare are like real doctors and healthcare professionals were involved. Uh, so for sport, uh, we didn't invite any um, um, uh, doctors or uh, practitioners that are practicing out there to our event, but I think uh, it would be a good um, suggestion or a good um, idea that can be implemented. Yeah. But for now, like, we don't do it. It's just purely discussion among the uh, students. Um, so I think Desmond has an additional question. So he says, actually, we have the National Intercollaborative Community Outreach Program in Malaysia, where medical, pharmacy and dental students come together to provide healthcare services to the public. However, during the implementation itself, it's always the students doing their own services and there's not much interaction. So what is your recommendation for this situation? Hmm. Actually, I also partially agree to this comment about like during some events, it might be just like the different faculty students doing their own services. Um, so for the interaction part, perhaps um, we can have like um, the different faculty students to, um, so for example, like if uh, we can have pharmacy students to help out in the dentistry booth um, so that the pharmacy students have to learn and communicate with the dentistry students in order to help to facilitate in their dentistry booth. Mm, yeah, like, so something like um, uh, asking them to like mingle and to learn from each other during the preparation. Yeah. But I also think that it's something that we have to work on as well. Yeah, I'm not sure whether other people have any like, suggestions.
Thank you. Now, Huang An also has a question. She says, thank you for the presentation. With regards to SPOT, I was one of the previous participants and I found it to be particularly meaningful. How was the other healthcare professions other than pharmacy picked and are there plans to incorporate other allied health professions in the future? Also, are there any plans to upscale the event to reach a larger target group? Um, actually, for sport, it was initially, um, um, actually, it was, I think it was initially called Needles. And actually, um, this event was uh, partnered with nursing. But however, um, uh, one of the years, they decided to revamp the event and they named it Sport because we decided to partner with Social Work and OT. I don't think there's like any particular reason as to why we chose to partner with Social Work and OT. Perhaps got to do with the schedule. And also I think uh, for Social Work and OT, um, we don't usually uh, communicate and get in touch with them. So perhaps that is why we decided to partner with them for the event. And whether there are other plans to incorporate other allied health professions, I would say yes, because um, uh, like for like other than OT, there's even a uh, PT. So yeah, I, yeah, there, there will be plans to try to work with other uh, faculties. Yeah, and whether there are plans to upskill the event. Uh, I would say currently um, we wouldn't want to upscale the event because like as I mentioned just now, um, there are only like about 30 plus participants for this event. Uh, I think we would want to work on trying to uh, gather like more participants uh, for the event. So more students from the faculties involved instead of um, being ambitious to reach a larger target group. Yeah. So we have another question um, from anonymous um, attendee. So they say, thanks for the presentation. When, conduct when conducting these interdisciplinary um, projects, wasn't it difficult or even controversial to discuss on responsibilities of each healthcare profession? Because most of the cases, it can be quite medical orientated. And in brackets, they have said, as a non-medical healthcare professionals are trying to enlarge the scope of their interventions in healthcare, they currently leg they, then they currently legally have. I I wouldn't say that um so you said the question talks about most of cases can be quite medical oriented. Um, but however, I feel that um, patient cases might not just be on the medical side. Like um, some of the difficulties that patient can be facing can be like a financial issue or emotional issues. And this is not something that um, uh, medicine can uh, handle. And so, for example, such issues might need like a social worker to help out in. Yeah, so uh, I don't think it is controversial to discuss on the responsibilities because I believe that each profession has their own role to play in. Yeah, uh, 
However, it may be difficult to actually um, demarcate like who is responsible for what. Uh, but it is still necessary to discuss like the, the supposedly the roles and the responsibilities of each uh, profession while we are still in school so that we can better work with each other in the working environment in the future. Um, Dia Carissa has a question. Um, from your explanation, I think NUS has been very good at running ITE. On my campus, this is still very lacking. The problem, the program that we run with other health students in my campus is still limited to holding art and sports events. I want my campus to have academic collaboration between health students. Any suggestions from you for this problem? I think, I think, um, if you would like, I think it's very good that your campus actually have like arts and like sports events that uh, involve like different healthcare faculties. Um, for the academic collaboration, uh, so like I mentioned just now about sport, I really think like uh, educational event like sport would be uh would be a good start like um you can try to work with uh just one other healthcare faculty because working with one healthcare faculty uh is easier to deconflict the schedule so perhaps you can start with working with one other healthcare faculty and um uh i think like for like even for my own event for sport, the participation rate is not uh very high as compared to like a sport event, cause I I guess it's just cause it's mainly educational, yeah. So um, I I I think uh, although it's like a small group, small number, but uh I think uh it will still be a good start, like even though it's small, but. I feel that if you continue to try to promote and maybe after working with one faculty, you can try to work with others and um, it would definitely help to increase the participation rate and help to uh, have more academic collaboration between the faculties. Um, we have another anonymous question. Um, do you have any suggestions for the associations who are just starting to organize the IPE events? For example, how to start contacting other healthcare students, associations, etc. Thank you. Okay, so um, for like to just starting to organize an IP event, I think uh, it's very important to contact the IP representative of the other faculty. Because um, for, for NUSPS, we uh, actually hold like uh, board meetings with the steering comm, which is like the professors. Yeah, so uh, we uh, during the meeting, we actually get to meet like uh, the IP reps of other faculty. So from there, we uh, slowly get each other's contact. Uh, but if you, if in your case, if you don't have like such a big scale meeting, uh, perhaps you can try to contact like maybe the head of the society, then try to trace down who is the IP rep. Yeah. So the first thing would be to try to contact the IP rep of 
other faculties and um, uh, starting to organize an IP event uh, would be good to start with just working with an, one other faculty. Yeah, so uh, I think it would be good to keep it like a uh, smaller scale first so that it's easier for you to uh, work with. Yeah, then slowly, then you try to upscale the event to incorporate more faculties. Are there any more questions for Minhui? So I don't see any more questions um, posted for Minhui. Um, so I would like to thank Minhui very much for your time and presenting and sharing your ideas today and also experiences with IPE with us. Um, especially um, in my case, since our university do have IPE in integrated into our course, but our association does not have the IPE committee and that's something that's that I find very interesting and and I'm sure probably other associations may also find interesting and it's something that would be considered um, in the future for um, the associations and also it's very enlightening to see how all the events that um, you guys have organized covered a wide ra range of activities such as even the more kind of fun things like the sports to the more academic like the clinical cases so it's um something that can be real highly considered especially for countries that have yet to conduct an ip event before so thank you very much for your time and also thank you to all the attendees that have um come to the to attend the webinar today. Um, so, yeah, thank you for providing insights. Um, so that will be the conclusion for um, today's webinar. And yep, thank you very much for everyone in attending today or tonight. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's time.